Robbie, what's on your radar today? Well, the decision by former national security officials to warn the public that the Hunter Biden laptop story looked like Russian disinformation was possibly motivated by the timely intervention of then Biden campaign advisor, now Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. That's according to Representative Jim Jordan, chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, who released recent testimony from one of the letter's signatories, former CIA Director Michael Morrell. Now, Jordan and his colleagues contacted Blinken about this last Thursday. Quote, we are examining that public statement signed by 51 former intelligence officials that falsely discredited a New York Post story regarding Hunter Biden's laptop as supposed Russian disinformation, Jordan said in his statement to Blinken. Quote, as part of our oversight, we have learned that you played a role in this inception of the statement while serving as a Biden campaign advisor, and we therefore request your assistance with our oversight. Hmm. Well, Blinken has some explaining to do. Recall that when the New York Post Hunter Biden laptop story was released just a few weeks before the 2020 election, Joe Biden's allies mustered all their forces to discredit it. Mainstream journalists and pundits told their viewers to be wary of the story and said the laptop was unverified, suspicious. Tech companies like Facebook and Twitter, they suppressed the New York Post story in part because they had been warned by the FBI that Russia would try to influence the election by promoting false information. A top Twitter executive, Jim Baker, a former FBI employee actually, he led the effort within the company to suppress it, the story on that basis. But one of the most important components of this pernicious effort to treat a true story as Russian disinformation was an open letter released in October of 2020. That letter was signed by 50 current and past intelligence officials. The signatories included John Brennan, former director of the CIA, James Clapper, former director of national intelligence, and Leon Panetta, who was defense secretary at that time. Now, the letter famously concluded that the New York Post Hunter Biden laptop story has all the classic earmarks of a Russian disinformation operation. Note that the ex-spy masters and defense ministers did try to guard against total embarrassment by using cautious phrasing. They didn't say the story was definitively Russian disinformation, just that it looked like Russian disinformation. This caution was completely abandoned by media outlets that published the letter. Politico, for instance, headlined its coverage thus, Hunter Biden's story is Russian disinfo, dozens of former intelligence officials say. Democrats, including Joe Biden himself, seized on this defense. Nothing to see here, it's Russian disinformation. Most notably, Biden played the CIA people say it's disinfo card when he debated Donald Trump. Watch this. So don't give me the stuff about how you're this innocent baby. Joe, they're calling you a corrupt politician. Nobody's hey, President the Trump, I want to stay hell. on the issue Excuse of race. We're talking about the, the issue. Laptop from hell. President Trump, Nobody. we're talking about race right now, and I do want to stay on the issue of race. President Trump, and you've I have just... to respond to that. Please. Because look, Very there are 50 former national intelligence folks who said that what this he's accusing me of is a Russian plant. They have said that this is, has all the care. Four, five former heads of the CIA, both parties, say what he's saying is a bunch of garbage. Nobody believes it except the, his and his good friend, Rudy Gianni. You mean the laptop is now no. another Russia, Russia, Russia hoax? And that's exactly be. what. Is this that's where you're exactly going? what. This is told. where he's going. The laptop that, right. is Russia, yes. Russia, Gentlemen, Russia. I want to stay on the issue of race. You okay? have to be kidding. Here Mr. we go President? again with Russia. But according to Jim Jordan's questioning of Morrell, the Biden campaign itself may have had something to do with that letter's formation. Jordan has claimed in a press release that Blinken called Morrell about the Hunter Biden laptop story in October 2020. Morrell testified, according to Jordan, that he did not have plans to write the open letter until after he talked to Blinken. Morrell further explained that one of his goals of writing the letter explicitly was to help Joe Biden get elected. Now, Democrats have pushed back and suggested that Jim Jordan is cherry picking quotes from this interview with Morrell. And to be clear, Jim Jordan has not released the full transcript as far as I can tell. At the very least, it wasn't linked in this press release. So I don't want to have to take this on blind faith from Jim Jordan. So let's go ahead and please release everything they have, because if the letter from ex-CIA officials that provided cover for the media and Joe Biden to ignore the laptop story as Russian disinfo was itself orchestrated or even indirectly encouraged by the Biden campaign own efforts, well, I think a lot of people will feel like their suspicions are at long last being confirmed. So this was some interesting news from last week. 
uh, discussing the formation of this letter. Honestly, it has some echoes of the proximal origins paper, mm -hmm. um, which we're learning now that they had a they talked to, to Fauci and people in his network about doing this letter, and it sounded like the the authors of of the proximal origins paper that said it was not a lab leak, that said it was uh, from the uh, animal spillover, were not really inclined to do that. And then they talked to the health officials and they said, okay, we're going to do that. That's the vibe we're getting here. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. again, we need to see that full transcript um, because it was kind of selectively quoted. And um, you know, you could absolutely do that in a way that makes this look um, right. more incriminating than it is. If, if there was a knowing political effort to put together a letter that folks know is going to be taken on faith, and then whatever nuance and caveats exist in the letter are going to be um, erased when the story is picked mm -hmm. up by the media. I mean, we know this to be true. The saying, a lie goes around the world twice before the truth gets out of the stables or whatever it is. Yeah. We know that people are going to latch on to an excuse in the exact way you demonstrated various media outlets did. And so compellingly, I, I had completely forgotten about that clip from the debates to show how Joe Biden predictably exploited this letter in order to prevent himself from having to answer real questions about what was going on at the time. He did a listen to the experts. He said, well, he the experts are the saying. Experts. And if it comes out that there was some coordination with the experts, then that's in incredibly damning. And looking back at Donald Trump, who, because of his affect and way of talking is often dismissed as as uh, as not credible being completely right 100% correct <laughs> like, yeah. you cannot argue with a single thing that he said in that clip russia has been used as a uh, as, as a excuse, as a, as a fulcrum from which Democrats have pivoted from real criticism for years now. It is dispiriting to think that we're still playing these kinds of games and that only now might there be a modicum of accountability for folks who have been using this strategy to win elections in a way that's never characterized as stealing or inappropriate or any anything like that, despite the fact that millions of Americans were misled repeatedly throughout sure. this process. Sure. And look, you know, maybe there was nothing, there might have been no uh, legal wrongdoing here. The, you know, the, Blinken was a member of the campaign. He he had the right to encourage his you know friends and CIA buddies to come to Biden's defense. But what they said in that letter, um, which again was care the letter was carefully worded. The media coverage was not, and what Biden said in that clip we, we played was not careful at all. Uh, that was used to gaslight the American people about the validity of this story. And that is, you know, that is something there should be at least, at least people can reckon with that yeah. as they're choosing, you know, as a, who to vote for and which policies to support. Yeah. Lincoln is now the Secretary of State, was, you know, rewarded for his efforts to help elect Biden, perhaps at any cost, even the cost of being really, really wrong about whether Russia was interfering in the laptop story. Yeah, it is, it is odd, too, because I think that the argument that the salacious nature of a lot of the laptop reporting didn't really have anything to do with Biden and it was a family matter and it was inappropriate. I think those arguments are so much stronger. Mm -hmm. You know, Biden's son's struggle with addiction shouldn't have any bearing on Biden's ability to be president. But the choice to suppress so much of this information, the revelations that came out in the context of the Twitter files, the decisions that were made to literally suppress it on social media, those have become a bigger story. And liberals who wonder why there's an appetite for someone like RFK Jr. talking about dismantling the CIA, dismantling these organizations mm -hmm. that have played such a hand in misleading the American public, it shouldn't come as a surprise. And now we're in a place where there's an information economy, where there's a complete and total lack of trust. And there could be some really bad things that come out of that. But until Democrats look inward at the role that they've played in all of this, instead of just pointing fingers across the aisle at misinformation, misinformation, Russia, 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 I'm a little fearful of what might come out of this next um, presidential campaign. I saw a Politico headline today, House GOP warns FBI to stay out of controversial surveillance talks. And it's about how the FBI's bad relationship with the House GOP means they're going to have a hard time reauthorizing this kind of surveillance mm. program, which I say, good, mm. don't, don't <laughs> authorize any surveillance uh, program of any kind. Uh, I, I think it is actually heartening to me as a libertarian to see Republicans having a little bit more skepticism of uh, of our of our intelligence yeah. officials and they're they're the spy master type people um, and they should they should extend that skepticism to a lot of what 
uh, the national law enforcement is doing, rather than only care about it if it is designed to yeah. like hurt Trump in some way. Yeah, absolutely. More rising right after this.